Today, I want to update for you the Logitech side panel key bindings from my original video from FS22, and I want to update that to FS25. Since the release of FS25, I've gone through the menus, found what's different, tested the controls, and here's the result. There's a few things that have to change with the key bindings, and I'll explain why. First, I'll link you the original video here because it still works as the menus are 90% the same as they were in FS22. However, there are some differences I want to address today that you will need to know about to make it work. First, we'll be going through the original side panel key bindings I showed and what has to change and why for just 5 minutes. Then we'll cover the wheel, then we'll look at what's changed in the game menus and how. I want to make this as concise as possible so there's chapters in the video so you can find what you're looking for, but all of this will tie in together. So here we're going to talk about the direct changes, the things in the game that directly alter the way this layout, the way that this works. And this is the, the keys that I gave in the FS22 video, which got great response and they're great key bindings. I will explain to you which ones don't work in FS25 and why they don't work. So what we're looking at overall here is the reason that I like these keys and they work is because they're all intuitive. Okay, for starters, we have the purple ones up here, the purple ones, and they're great because these were like the, the vehicle drive buttons, right? Like engine start, steering mode, lights, like the vehicle drive. These here control like your trailer and your, uh, your harvester buttons. These here were like tool auxiliary buttons. And these here were like main drive and the most used things like tools on, off, lower, raise, fold, unfold, reverse toggle. These are the things you need the most often. So it went together really intuitively. Because some of the things in FS25 simply work different, and I'll get to that in just one moment here, it breaks up some of the intuitive nature of this. So I think the best thing I can do is um, explain what's messed up and why. And then I will, of course, if I haven't already, in a different part of this video, I'm gonna sh we're going to go through the key binds menu and I'm going to show you where all this stuff is in there. But first, let's have a look at the control panel itself. We're going to look at the keys that can't work and, and why. The most startling uh, thing here is that we can no longer use this as a modifier. I was using 21 as a shift key. If you saw the previous video, I suggest you watch it. It was a good video that explains all of this. 21, I was using as a shift modifier to get more functionality out of these buttons here. But in FS25, button 21 here is hard-coded to change your attachment, your active attachment in your tractor, and you can't you, you can't modify it. You, you can't change that. So every time you press 21, it changes your, your current attachment, so it's no longer any good as a modifier. 16 is right above it, and I wasn't using it for anything, so I'm using 16 as my modifier now. It's a compromise, and that's the thing is this is full of compromises now, but that's what I had to do. It is right above 21. What I did was I put a white sticker on it so it's easy to see. And now I just press 16 with my thumb as a modifier and then press whatever. It works, but yeah, it's a small compromise, but that's what we're going to have to do. 21 is hard-coded to change your attachment. However, um, here I have it uh, as the shift to hold down and then rotate this wheel up and down to change vehicles. That still works fine. I still use it. It's easier because 21 is right by the wheel. It's easy to just press 21 with like my ring finger and just rotate the wheel up and down to change vehicles. Still works great. Because, yeah, it changes your attachment, but who cares if you're changing vehicles? So I just left that the same. On on my end, it works, right? Now, so speaking of hard-coded, there are some other buttons here that are hard-coded that we're going to have to avoid. It pretty much screws up our purple grouping up here, but not really. Let me explain why. Button 1 is screwed up. It's hard-coded in the game to open the menu now. It wasn't in FS22. In FS25, button number 1 is hard-coded to open the menu and cannot be changed. It is stupid, but that's that's just how it is. I moved engine start to the wheel, and I'll talk about that if I haven't already in the wheel section. So engine start is off this. That can't be done anything with. Button three here is hard-coded to <laughs> a full thing's menu back, which is, by the way, not a bindable key in the key bindings menu. Yeah, the rest of the ones I'm going to talk about here are not in the key bindings menu. They are hard-coded with no way to change them because they don't appear in the menu. But it doesn't really interfere when you're driving. No, it doesn't. So you can still use three. And it still works. I tested it. It still works for reverse drive direction. I mean, like I said, I have these as like engine drive keys and lights. Hey, three still works as I had hot keyed. But if you're in menus, it goes back. But hey, so it doesn't really, that doesn't really get in your way. It's just kind of an odd thing. I'm just saying what buttons are hard coded. Well, three is weird, right? Five and six also are. Again, there's no way to change these. They're not in the menu. Um, five and six tab you left and right like the left and right bumpers on a controller through menu tabs. Now, again, that doesn't affect their functionality technically. I'm just letting you know 
they are hard coded and cannot be changed. They tab you through menus. How weird is that? They're diagonal from one another on your figure. Um, so, but they still work. So these are still workable. Okay. I'm just letting you know what they do. Going through the ones that here that I found that are hard coded to stuff in the game that you cannot change. Eight is another one. Now this one we can't use, but Hey, look at this on the key bindings. It wasn't used anyway. So there we go. Eight for some inexplicable reason opens the cover on your trailer. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, there is a binding for that in the menu. There is. And, and I bound it to, oh, right here. I have it on shift and four, but eight still opens and closes the cover. So what I'm saying is it's, it's like hard coded in the, in the hardware or something. I don't know. Anyway. So be aware of that. So don't press one. It'll, it'll pull up the game menu and don't press eight. It'll open the cover on your trailer. Other than that, these are all okay to use in the vehicle. So we use the 16 instead of 21, a shift, avoid pressing one and eight. So like I said, there's like some compromises here. This is no longer as intuitive as it was, but FS25 just came out. I've got time to get used to it. I think it'll work fine. So yeah, my goal here was to explain to you what is broken and why. Now let's have a look at the wheel here. I apologize for the crude picture I just pulled up, but this should be pretty quick. For the most part, I have this bound as if it were an Xbox controller. And we'll go through a lot of that when we go through the menu next, right? Like I have this set um, B button, you know, still as helper and this where I could is still like accept and whatnot. I still have X bound to uh, actually is bound with. Yes. Yeah, so let's cover that right now. Bound with this for engine start. All right. So there's a couple of things that had to change because of the things that are different in FS25. Because though that purple one key on the side panel is just hard bound to menu that was the engine start. So what I've done is I've put it on this shift pedal. Now note that I don't use the shift pedals because I drive an automatic tractor. If you use those for shifting, you'd have to work something different. What I did was for start the tractor, I bound it to this shift pedal plus X. That actually makes it very similar to how it was on the Xbox controller to start the engine. So actually that kind of almost became more intuitive in a way. I had no problem using both of either one of these shift pedals as modifiers for keys here, which is actually really handy it was working for me. So that's where I bound engine start actually kind of makes it more like the Xbox controller. Now let's talk about the D pad here. Some things have changed that makes this just a different situation. In FS22, I used that to walk around because my steering wheel anyway, does not have the sticks here. And so I took off the zoom and change vehicle functions. And if you watch the other video, it'll explain why. So I don't need to go into it here. The point is we can't use this by itself to walk around anymore because in FS25, we actually need the zoom function on foot because of third person. So that gave me a huge conundrum here because I really liked this as walk around. It really worked. So here's where I've used the shift paddle as a shift key again. What I've, and I'll show this in the menus in the next section when we show the menus. So what I've done is to walk around when you're outside your vehicle, it's hold this paddle and then this. So it's still basically the same thing. You still move around with this. You just hold this shift paddle in and that allows you to walk around foot. And then when you shift to third person, you can still use the up and down keys to zoom in and out. So to the changes on the wheel is this shift paddle plus this is start engine. Everything else I have tried where I could to make it like an Xbox controller, this shift paddle plus movement or plus the D-pad is your movement on foot. But really the focus here is the side panel, but um, this kind of finishes some stuff off. So let's get to what's different in the game menu. Okay, so here we are in the game. We're gonna go over the stuff with the menus. I wanna try to keep the most important stuff first, and then we're gonna end up with going through the key bindings. I wanna make this video as short and concise as, as, as possible because I don't wanna keep you here too long. So that's why the first part of the video, you know, it's like in order of importance, right? The first part of the video was the side panel because that's what it's about. We're going to go through the most important stuff here and um, get what we need to get done. Right. So when you fire up the game, FS25 with the wheel and the side panel, as we've got set up, right? The very, very first thing you're going to want to do is go to the options here on the main menu, go down here, and these uh, dead zones are all screwed. They're all by default 14%. Now, here's what I did. This right here is for the wheel. You may not have this screen first. Notice down here, X switch device. This this really got me because by default, this will be up. Okay, so here's the Logitech side panel controls. It calls it SciTech. It says that was the original manufacturer. The point is here, change these dead zones. I did to 5%, just across the board, 5%. This is the stick on the side panel. I changed it down to five. It works fine. 
I didn't see this button for a while and it was messing with me. You want to go to your wheel. These were all 14%, which, um, yeah, so this is where you fix that because you have to turn the wheel like halfway to even turn your tractor. Well, here you go. Press X to switch device. I moved all these to 1%. You might want to put it at two so your tractor doesn't drive itself. But personally, I had no problem with this at 1%. The only other thing here I think you can also change in the game, and that's uh, force feedback. Yeah, I think you can change this in the game as well, but I just have this at 50%. So here's the stuff from the main menu. Next, we'll look at the stuff in the game menu. We'll start with the most important stuff. So let's load this up. We'll start with the most important stuff. And then we'll go through the key bindings. Now that we're in the game, we're going to start with the most important setting. If you're using the side panel, steering wheel, and pedals, and that is here under general settings, and that is under direction change. And um, personally, I prefer to have this set on manual. I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you what is funky with this in FS25? I set this to manual because here's the main issue with steering with the pedals, and I probably addressed this in my FS22 key bindings video, which is 90% still valid, by the way. But the thing is, you want a manual direction change because with the controller, when you're driving forward and backward, you hold the brake to go backward. That's not, that doesn't really work with pedals. It's very awkward and hard with pedals because it's hard to push down the brake pedal all the way, of course. So what you do is you put this on manual, and then there's a key that we bind on the side panel the number 20, the green key, and you can just tap that to toggle going backward or forward. It even works as a great brake. The point is we want to put this as manual and then the control for that. I'm going to show you where that's at and then we'll talk about the Y real quick. I'm going to make this as quick as possible. So go to controls, move this over. If you didn't know, you can move that over. You can move that over. And we want to go down to gearbox is where that is. It's it's hidden in here. Here it is. Gearbox, change direction and put that as 20. That's the green button there. So when you're when you got your hand on the side panel when you're driving and you got your hand on the stick, you can just reach up with your middle finger or something and tap 20 to you know change direction of your vehicle. So what you can do is you can actually hold the gas pedal and just tap 20 and go forward and backward, just like you're driving an actual forklift, right? You just hit a button to go forward and backward. It's really, really, really handy. Now However, it works just a little bit different in FS25, and I think it's a bug or something. In FS25, it doesn't always work if you're on a, uh, a different attachment. You know, I think it's actually easier if I take just a second here and show you. Currently, I have the fertilizer spreader selected. It's not a problem. I tap the 20 button. Actually, it is a problem. Yeah, here's, here's where the problem comes in. I'm tapping the 20 button. I can't shift into reverse. If I select the tractor, now I can. Now I'm tapping the 20 key and I go between drive and reverse. But some attachments, not all, see here, watch my attachments. I'm going to shift to the front weight and I can no longer, I can't shift into, into forward gear anymore. I have to shift to the tractor itself. And that, that is not my fault, obviously, and it's not the side panel. That's just the game. The game, for some reason, that the direction toggle doesn't work if you're on anything but the tractor and some attachments. Like I, my cultivator, it works on that, but some attachments, it doesn't. So that's obviously with the game. And that's just an unfortunate thing because uh, let's go back to the settings here so that you know about that. If your direction change is not working, you have to make sure that you're actually on your tractor I think that's just a bug, all right? But uh, I wanna keep this short as I can. So let's move on with the next most important thing here. Hey, this is me from the future here as I'm editing this video. Yeah, it occurred to me that uh, the reverse toggle, which I have on 20, it may not be working when you're uh, currently selecting an, an attachment or something because it could be something that's hard-coded to something else and just, I, I, I can't change it off that. I, I'm still using, it, it's the best button for reverse toggle. It just is because it's right there by your ring finger or your middle finger when you're when you're driving. And they're just going to have to fix that in the game and take off these, these buttons that we can't change because um, that's just unfortunate. But I think that might be why that is. And uh, it, that's why it may not work on an attachment because that button may like do something with attachments that I haven't seen. And that's why it only works when you're on your tractor itself. Again, I, I think that Giants is just going to have to, I think there's an issue with this side panel compatibility with FS25. That's why some of these buttons are coded to stuff that we cannot un uncode them off of. And I think Giants has an issue with compatibility with the side panel. And that's what's causing this. So we'll start at the top of the key bindings here. Now that we fixed the stuff in the menus, right? The, uh, the dead zones in the very first game menu before you launch the game, make sure your dead zones are taken out unless you want to turn your wheel halfway around just to, just to turn your tractor. 
that when you get in game, that direction change, unless you want to hold on the brake to go in reverse, but it's really difficult because you can't, I, it is for me anyway, I can't push my brake down far enough to go in reverse. So that's just something they're going to have to fix in the game. Right. Anyway, moving on, we're at the top of the key bindings now. We're going to work our way down. And luckily, it starts with the most important thing I want to talk about first. So I moved the uh, walking around foot to holding the left shift paddle plus the arrow keys. It's really the quickest thing. And there's two reasons I had to change that. One is because now we actually have a zoom function on foot because now we have third person. And I still use the up and down to zoom in and out. The other is simply um, they weren't working. So, yeah, with FS25, you simply can't use the direction change to move. It's simply didn't work. That's what we're here in the key bindings to do is I'm going to show you all this stuff to erase any questions you may have. And that's why this is the last part in the video. This may drag on a little bit longer, but most of your questions in the original video was regarding particular things in here. So this is at the end of this video. So you can stop the video once you've seen what you want to see, but we're going to go through like everything that we can here. All right. So first of all, the movement keys simply wouldn't work. <laughs> it simply wasn't moving around. So, um, holding uh, the shift paddle plus this solves two problems. A, it makes it so that it actually works and B, it makes it so that you can still use up and down for zoom. All right, moving down here, I didn't touch these. This is a uh, uh, side panel um, bindings. I didn't touch those. And down here, oh, I just noticed it flipped these around since the last time I was, it was in here. These were in this column, this column was here. So I might be thrown off a little bit. Jump and crouch, I still have, like I said, I bound the, the wheel the same as an Xbox controller where I could, A and Y, still jump and crouch. I did hotkey build mode to the left shift pedal plus that button because it's like an Xbox controller where you hold. I mean, it's similar because it looks, yeah, right. That's, that's how I bound that. Anyway, moving on. I didn't touch these. These anything with a little the circle and the arrows. These are axis controls, which means sticks and or pedals. So I didn't touch any of these. Any control with a circle on it and an arrow. These are default, and I didn't touch them because those are axis controls. I don't want to screw with those, right? So yeah, anything with those, I didn't touch. Um, I never honk my horn. I didn't change that. That's default. Whatever that is, it's default. I didn't do anything with that. Start stop engine. This I mentioned RB that's right bumper. That's the, that's the shift paddle. So right shift paddle plus X. It's the most like the, the way it originally was toggle steering mode. This, I don't know what this is. I don't know what button six is on the wheel. I just, I'm saying that's default. Here it is on the side panel. I have it bound as two. You'll see that on the, in the, in the legend that I made for the FS22 video. That's two. This, I don't know what button six is in the wheel. I didn't touch it. Change driving direction. Again, I, I didn't put these here. I just left these as default. Here's the change driving direction. It's three on the side panel. Toggle cruise control. That is by default. It's like the one hard coded thing on the side panel that works and as good as 25. It's uh, cruise control. I didn't touch these. I didn't touch these. That's there by default. If the, if the default stuff, um, I use the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach, right? So if I say something's default, that's just the way it was. Default, default, um, interact, default, because that is, I believe, one of the crane buttons. That's default, default, um, default, default stuff. Um, that's default, but that's, that's what you want X because that's the same as throw object on controller. All right. Here, this I did bind because this wasn't bound. I don't think X enter to enter the vehicle. That'll get you. So yeah, just like the Xbox controller, the X on the wheel will enter the vehicle. I didn't uh, do this. So I don't know what that is. It's, I, don't, I don't ever have passengers because that's for passengers. That was default. Up and down for zoom in and out. Okay, switch vehicle. Um, here, I'm still using the 21 for the shift key, as I mentioned in the side panel section. 21 is hard bound to swap attachment, swap the tool you, that you're using. But I just left this as uh, swap to next previous vehicle because it doesn't matter swapping. It doesn't matter if it swaps your attachment when you do it because you're swapping an entire vehicle. So it doesn't matter. And it works great for swap vehicle because it's literally right there by the wheel. I can just hold that and just spin the wheel up or down to uh, toggle through vehicles. So that still works for me on it. Attach tool A just like a controller. All right, these are part of the key bindings on the side panel, four and five, previous and next tool. That works just fine. Um, this, again, I don't know what this six is. I didn't touch these. These are the fault. These are both the fault. Here's how we have it on the wheel. 10 to dump. And then we're using 16 as the new shift key. So 16 plus 11 is toggle tip side. Again, this is just, there's nothing to note here. This is if you bound the side panel and you're using 16 as the new shift key instead of 21, as I explained. This is, works exactly the same as in the uh, thing. So uh, nothing different here. 
Uh, nothing. This is all fine. Nothing different here. I don't know what that is. I left that. It's default, whatever it is. Don't know what that is. It's default, whatever the heck it is. I didn't touch that. A lot of this stuff is filed under um, fix, you know, debug as you go. Yeah, I have a thing. I actually wrote myself a note that says debug as you go. Some of the stuff, you know, the controls you may have to change when you encounter it. So what I'm doing here is I'm helping you understand what is messed up, how and why. So hopefully um, you can fix it. And if you can't, maybe we can work together and fix it. That's default. Don't have it bound on the side panel. And I didn't set that um, because apparently this is not needed. Whatever this is, it's not needed. Turn tools on and off. Um, it's not what you think it is. I don't know what it is. It's nothing. You don't need it. Uh, same with this. Although I do have it here. So uh, so this is fold, unfold. So this is fold, unfold. And it's shift plus the 19. The reason is because just 19 by itself is um, unfold all. I found, I probably explained this in the original Keybind video. I found that generally I want to unfold all the tools and not just one at a time. So unfold all is just 19 and then unfold just one tool is shift and 19. Generally unfold all is what you want to go to. It's more intuitive. So that's why, yeah, this is just unfold. One single tool is shift and 19 moving down. Uh, I didn't set these as default. Change seeds. That's on the side panel key bindings. All right, these are all side panel key bindings that we're gonna talk about real quick. Um, this is default stuff. Again, I don't know what five and six are in my steering wheel. I've never been able to figure it out. No clue. Um, doesn't matter because those were, those we have bound over here. Right, uh, toggle pipe. Yeah, that's your pipe out. That's on the harvester keys. It's the orange keys, uh, 16. Again, our new shift key, plus nine. Open, close cover. Um, these are all, yeah. Okay, turn on off all tools. Again, 17 is just turn on off one tool because here with, okay, so with, so with 17 button, I found that you generally just want to turn one tool on off at a time. Generally, that's why it's just 17 to turn on off the tool you're on. Turn off all tools, it's shift plus that. And hey, if you, uh, yeah. As opposed to fold tools, I found you generally want to fold all all the tools at once. For instance, if you're using a mower, this is why it's set like this. If you're using a mower, if you're, you generally have a mower on the front and the back and you generally want to fold or unfold both at the same time. So that's why fold tools is just 19 and, sh and fold one tool is shift 19 because you follow me. If you're folding, unfolding tools, you either only have one tool to fold and unfold or you're using mowers and you want to fold them all at once. That's why fold all tools is the default and fold one tool is shift right? Have it however you want it. Sorry for the ramble there. I'm just trying to make it as clear as possible, but some things do sound confusing. That's by default. Again, I don't know what the five and six button are. No clue. Um, I think they're supposed to be, no, I don't know because they're not the shift paddles. Shift paddles. Okay. Here's the thing. So if you look at the diagram of the wheel that comes with the wheel or whatever, it says five and six and it points to shift paddles. I swear it does, but the shift paddles read as left bumper, right bumper, LB and RB. And the, uh, the buttons on the wheel that say LSB and RSB um, read as <laughs> left and right bumper as well. I don't know what the heck five and six are. And to be honest with you, I simply don't. So these are default. I'm sorry for the right. Uh, these are access controls. I don't mess with those AI worker B. I think I did set that just like the, it is a controller. Again, I don't know what that button is. Same there. Don't know what the button is. Change work width that is on the side panel key bindings. Yeah, here, that's the left side bumper. Um, I didn't set that though, whatever that is, I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't set that, this stuff. I. This is default stuff. This is all default stuff I didn't mess with. Select camera. Oh, I know, I know what that is. I know why it says that. Here's why it says that, okay. Select camera. That should be pressed down the right stick on a controller, right? That toggles your first and third person camera. And so I had that bound to RSB on your wheel. Look at your wheel and it says RSB, you know, which emulates the right, the push in the right stick, right? The right side stick button. Um, and that is what it was bound to, but that won't work for some reason. Okay. That's one of the things in the game that will not work. Um, it just won't. I don't know. There's some things with the FS25, which I think are bugs and won't work. And that's one of them. So what that is, that is, um, it's the left bumper, which is the left shift paddle 
plus right side bumper. And the reason it just says LB there, it's too, the key bind is too long for it to fit. Watch. I'm going to click it. I'm going to hold the left shift paddle and press the right side bumper. And select camera re was remapped to LB, comma, RSB, blah, blah, blah. But it just says LB. That's why, because it's too long to fit in there. So shift, uh, so, sorry, select camera is hold the left shift paddle and press the right bumper. Again, that's because pressing the, when I say right bumper, I mean the button on your wheel that says RSB. Because when you press that, it doesn't do anything. You can't bind it by itself. So it's one of those places where because the game is wonky, buggy or something, we're holding the left shift pedal and then pressing that. That's why that is. It. Hope that makes sense. Weirdness, weirdness abound. Okay, um, pause game. That's by default, just pause on the keyboard. I saw no reason to put that anywhere because I don't do it much. Um, skip message box. Look, I don't know. Um, I tried to put A as accept in the places I could. I think that's why I put that there, but it still, it only works as accept like half the time. Um, when I'm shifting through menus, it's generally, you got to use the mouse. Some of the controls are just funky. It's you, I just suggest use a mouse when you go through, uh, menus, open menu, this, you physically cannot change. You click it. It's, it's locked. You cannot change that. No matter where you click this, you can't. That's, that's just, yeah, it's unfortunate. Shop, I believe I did set that so that it's the same as it was on an Xbox controller. I set this to map, um, so that way it does something. You can't set this to the menu. You can't because, <laughs> because of that, yeah, that's hard-coded to the menu, and literally you can't change it, and you can't set anything else there. So, <laughs> so I set this to map, so that way pushing start, Still, it will bring up the menu, right? Close enough. Toggle map view. Um, yeah, I have this as 24 because I like to I, I, I like to play with my map off. You know, I like to play with less HUD. So that toggles the map or just toggles it off, right? It cycles through the map toggles. Here, again, this is me trying to set A on this wheel as close as I could to A on the controller. So I, I, I try, but still, you're going to want to generally have to use the controller just this is me trying to set A as accept, but, um, okay, 22. This toggles on the help window in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. I hate that. Um, all the words and text on my screen is, I find it unimmersive and I don't usually use it. So, hey, no problem. Toggle help text. That's that annoying, yeah, um, window up in the corner of your screen when you're, when you're driving around. It's uh, all that crap up there. I don't need all, especially when you're on PC and you, if you move your mouse, it pulls up the keyboard controls. And a lot of times it'll take up like half the screen. So that's what that button does. It toggles that on off. We're almost at the bottom here. Yeah. So that's toggle help text. I like to play with that off or at least have it so you can toggle it on and off. Uh, gearbox. I didn't touch anything in gearbox except I did take off. I did. I did unbind shift up and down because I'm using those paddles for other things. And here's what I figure. I figure a lot of people probably drive automatic like I do. And if you're not driving automatic and you have a wheel and side panel, then you probably have a gear shift, right? So I figure if people are shifting, then they're probably using the gear shift. So I just unbound these just so I could use those shift paddles as shift keys for the wheel. And that, they work really, really great as that. So didn't touch any of this stuff. This is the thing that we have to, and we've already gone over this. I believe if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Toggle light, yes. Oh, so here's the vehicle lights. These are in the side panel of key bindings. Uh, I had no issues with these. These are all the purple keys. And like I said, a lot of the purple keys are screwed around and, and do things as I mentioned in the first section of this video. However, they still work in your vehicle. Ask me if you have any questions about that. And that is it. Guys, thanks so much for sticking with me through this video. Like I said, that's why I left that part till the end because I do still suggest you watch the original FS22 video. I just want to help you guys get the most efficient key bindings you can out of your wheel and everything like that. I left this part toward the end of the video so that once you saw what you, you wanted to see, you could skip out of the video and, and move on to other things. But I thank you for sticking through and watching the rest of the video that I've made for you here. I hope this is helpful. Again, anything you want to know, put in the comments down below. Thanks so much for viewing. And if you like the uh, channel, subscribe and follow along. I really appreciate it. if you subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot and make this content. And uh, thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.